Hey guys, this is National Master Kevin Yang back at it with another video. So this will be against Anton 2010. You know, always an opponent to watch out for. Let's get to it. E4, E6, Queen to E2. What am I doing? Well, I'm trying to avoid the main line of the French and go into what is called the Chigor variation. So if d5 is played, I'm going to take, and okay, well, I'm going to force you to take with the queen, but here I'll get in knight c3, I'll get in some development, and things will go okay for me. So here our friend Anton 2010 played c6, preparing d5, so if takes, pawn takes. I played g3, d6, interesting. And our friend Anton now played d5, so I'm pretty sure this was a misclick if I remember correctly. d5, d3, so the opening is standard, right? Nothing much. And now the move d takes e4, and here is why I don't quite like that move. I don't quite like this move because, number one, I guess, I really liked this structure, you know, and um, I'm going to be honest, I'm not a big fan of bishop d7 either, because it kind of feels like the bishop really has no future if it stays on d7, given that it's guarded by these two pawns that make a cage for the bishop, so I would have suggested b6 and bishop b7, and then c5. But in the game, bishop d7 was played, and this pawn takes e4 move. Um, I still I still don't like it, because, well, the bishop is caged, and I really like this triangle setup. So now that the triangle has been disturbed, I think there are more opportunities for me. So if bishop c5, well, okay. But I think another problem with this move is this bishop is not getting out, right? So I envisioned some sort of c5, bishop c6, right? To get this bishop out, because it looks terrible on d7. So bishop c5, and now I start making space, right? Because I feel the need to, you know, keep going forward. Knight d5, knight e4, and c4. I just... I need to get the knight away. So I do that. Knight b6. I'm just bringing my pieces out, right? And I think it's most important that we just bring our pieces out and we chill. Knight a6. I think this is a very interesting moment, right? Because black is trying to get in c5. So the question is, do I play c5 myself and close that bishop's life down? Or do I not? And ultimately, I decided not to. Because I decided, okay, if c5 comes, I'm going to play rook a to d1. And I'm going to put pressure on the d file anyways. So after queen to c7, I said, well, it doesn't hurt. I'm going to play c5. I'm going to shut down the bishop. And after knight d5, bishop to d4. I'm keeping my pieces strong, but now queen takes, pawn to b5, and now queen to a3. Yeah, I know, that was a short game. But what did we learn here, right? The opening was okay. I mean, Anton played it, but problems started with the move bishop d7. You know, the move bishop d7 just didn't show much future for this bishop, right? Like I always say, when you develop, you should have a sort of intention, or you should at least be like, well, what can we do after this? You know, it might, it might be stored in a cargo ship hold here, but what can I do later to bring this guy out, right? So then came the move pawn takes e4. I kind of felt like... You know, I like the solid structure, and just in case it 
leaves the flexibility of bringing this knight out and keeping this solid d5 pawn would not be a bad idea, right? So, well, then came bishop c5, and it, it also sort of prevented this bishop from coming out again. So there were a few things in this opening that didn't quite like, but in the end, it all came down to one move, the blundering of the knight. And when my queen moved back, Anton knew his game. So let's go to the next game. So the next game was a very good game by Anton. Uh, it was a game that I lost, and it was a game that, well, if I had more time, I would have done much better in. But that's what happens when you play a simul. And that's what happens when a person challenges you to 20 minutes. Right? There's no delay or whatever. And, you know, you're thinking on other games, and then you check on Anton's game, and you're at five minutes. So that's how it goes. But e4, knight f6, and I played the Alakine defense. So this is normal theory, but I would say don't quite play this if you are a beginner, because it requires a little bit of knowledge in terms of how to attack the center and how to develop your pieces, and that kind of thing. So here this opening is okay, but now I'm thinking I'm getting the edge, because after bishop g4, I threaten taking on f3, I threaten knight takes d4, and after d5, I play knight to e5. And now b3, to protect this pawn on c4. And here I had a few options. Number one, I could have played e6 and try to open the position by taking on d5, right? So my plan was, okay, if e6, pawn takes e6, pawn takes e6, well, we have threats now, right? And if you don't do anything, I'm going to take on d5, and you might take on d5, but I will have a half-open file. So then I thought about, okay, well, if white plays bishop e2, then white might be okay, right? So I said, I gotta give our friend Anton double pawns. Take, take, and bishop h3, because I want to prevent this pawn from coming up. Bishop f1, queen d7, bishop takes, queen takes. Now, I'm not quite sure if taking was the best option, because in hindsight, there's probably better things to do. Um, like, for example, maybe knight to e4 and knight to g5, and just, you know, don't force the trade, but um, at least do it without letting the black queen commit to h3. Because after king d2, what I should have played is the move e6 again, you know, possibly opening up this rook and possibly taking on d5 and opening the center for me as well. But I play knight d7 to go to e5, and after knight t4, I said charge. Queen to h4. I'm lucky there's no trapping my queen or whatsoever on g5. So after f4, I played knight g4, h3, and here I debated. I said, do I take on e3 or do I not, right? Because if I take on e3 and pawn takes e3, I can play rook here, and I can play e6 and maybe open up things. But then I looked at my knight and I said, well, if I play knight to f6, then maybe I can swing it over to h5, put some pressure on the f4 pawn. And I was like, which one did I value more? I said, well, I probably want the f4 pawn more. So it was my judgment, but knight takes e3, according to the engine, was better. So I'm still working on my judgment. Don't worry. So here I played the very tricky move, bishop to h6. And here I'm just threatening to take on f4. What happens if knight takes f5? Well, it looks like a really good move, right? 
because the pawn can't take because it's a pin. But I have queen to h5, and well, Chekaruski, Forkaruski, sorry. So, king to d3 happened, and I thought this was very genius of our friend Anton 2010, you know, just getting the king safe and at the same time keeping this threat alive. So I played king h8. After knight t2, I piled some pressure. And I played rook to e8. You know, one day I want to play e5. Here I played a6 because I was a little bit worried about bishop takes a7. After check, I moved my king over. I moved my rook. And I think this was a very important moment for me because I knew that I wanted to go e5, but I wanted this rook to protect b7, just as the queen is keeping a blind eye on it. So after rook to d1, I said, eh, I don't know if I want this guy to be weak, right? So it was like, what if e5, pawn takes, rook takes, I don't know if I want this guy to be weak. So in the game, I played b5. I just looked for opportunity. I was trying to open the position. And here, I played bishop g7. And at this moment, I was already in quite some time pressure, maybe like five minutes or so. So after knight d4, I played knight f6, relocate my knight to e4, knight t6, knight e4. And after knight to g5, I played knight c3. So at this point, I was pretty happy with my position. However, I was in time pressure and I had to make split second decisions. I played knight takes rook. If I was in a real game, I would probably find the move, the moves rook c8 or rook a8. Now I briefly looked at rook to c8 because I said, well, okay, if rook to c8, knight takes f7, knight takes d1, and here I will take on f7, and I think I would be pretty good. But in the simul, I was just concentrated on making the moves that I felt were right, and I just snatched off that rook. When in hindsight, could have played rook a8, could have threatened that a2 pawn, and it's important. Right? The a2 pawn is weak right now, and it's important to grab. So knight takes d1, rook takes, rook to c8, and here I just was like, I gotta keep my rook. Rook to e8, and now I think I'm winning. Right, so in the game I was like, okay, I gotta be winning here. Rook to c2, rook to d2, okay, I'll just pile up the pressure. Queen to d3, okay, I'll just get that rook to c3, just maybe threaten the queen here, maybe threaten the pawn on h3, maybe play queen to h5, and I said, okay, queen d4, I'll just check, and I'll check, and I evaluated this endgame, and to be honest, I don't think I should have traded the entire way here, I don't know, it's hard to say, right, because I can take on h3, but why can come back to d4 and threaten queen to g7 checkmate, right? So I have to evaluate my risks. But in the game, I looked at this, and I was like, okay, I'm definitely winning here, right? I gotta be. But after knight to c6, things got a little bit tricky. King to f7, b4, and I was like, how do I meet this guy, right? So I played e6, thinking, okay, if pawn takes e6, b5, I'm on my way, right? So that's what I'm thinking, I'm on my way. But then I see b5, and I'm like, oh no, oh, oh no. So what happens, right? What do I do? I played rook to c4. Yikes. You know, I was just like panicking. I had literally like 10 seconds. I played rook to c4 b6 happened, rook to c5, and the blundering move, king takes e6. I'll explain why in the next video.